Good evening, brothers and sisters. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm not quite sure how long the voice is going to last, but we're going to go till it gives out. Um, and it might hang in there, so hopefully. Um, tonight, um, I want to uh, talk about the topic's going to be on on the Father's love. And uh, just kind of curious, like, what, what comes to your mind, like, um, like in general, what, what, what comes to your mind when you think of the Father's love in relation to God or your Father, like, what, um, yeah. Somebody that knows what's best for us does what is best for us. Yep. Is there any, uh, as far as like in scripture, well, what does your mind go to um, when you think of the Father's love? John 3.16. John 3.16. I like that. Yeah, I, I come across that. Um, what I want to uh, focus on tonight is, is the, um, the parable of the prodigal son. And I want to first start, before we, before we go to that, I would like to, uh, I would like us to read, um, I'd like to read 1 John 4, um, and I was wondering if someone would uh, read that for me. It'd be 1 John 4, verse 7 to the end of the chapter. What I want to focus on in this is um, the importance of of love and, and the Father's love towards us, and how without that um, we we wouldn't be where we are today. Someone want to read that? You got it. What was the reference again? First John four seven. Yeah. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested as the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. If God so loved us, we are also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. To love one another, God dwelt in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because of because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loved his brother also. Thank you for that. So, um, the the topic of of like the father's unconditional love has always been something that has um, really I've, something that I've really struggled with um, understanding that that the father loves us like un, <clears throat> unconditionally and um, it's it's part of the reason why uh, the the prodigal 
the prodigal story or the prodigal son um, has had such a impact on, on my life um, in in numerous ways, but also recently. And I would like to uh, I'd like to share my testimony on that. And but before we do that, I'd like to read. Let's read um, the parable of the prodigal son, which is Luke fifteen. And starts at verse 11. And I would like someone to read that to the end of the chapter too. He said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of my goods that followed to me, and he divided them unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey to a very far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be warm. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. And he would have been with had filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread, enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will rise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to call thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be married. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, would not go in. Therefore he came his father out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at, at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never givest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son that was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed, killed for him the fatted calf, and he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. I will, it was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead, and his life again, and was lost, and was found. Thank you for that. So, so um, I would like to, to share my journey with, with, with this story. Um, and and I, I've shared some of it before, and uh, some of you know it a lot more than others, but um, was it approximately, was it seven years ago, I, uh, I left home at 17. And uh, my father had given me that, had given me the option. Um, I didn't have to leave, um, but, I, but I chose to. And... Um, Kind of like in the story, you know, the father, the father let him go. He he let him go because um, he, I think he knew that that he was gonna leave regardless. But in this story, um, he gave him his his inheritance. Um, so. Um, I left and, and went on the harvesting crew and did uh, 
did what I thought was best for myself. You know, I was a rebellious and, um, and I was trying to understand this, this concept of, of love. Like I didn't really grow up with the, the, um, the expression of love. It was more understood is, is what I would, what I would call it. Um, and Later on, um, I get back from the harvesting crew and went back to New York, did there for a little bit. Then I had this job opportunity in Ohio, and I remember thinking, like, okay, I don't know anybody. Where where am I going to stay? And um, dads had moved out here in the meantime, and um, I remember calling dad, and uh, dad's like, He's like, absolutely, come on out. He said, um, we got a place for you to stay. And uh, three days later, I packed up my stuff, and, and I was in <clears throat> in Ohio. And it just it just struck me again the uh, you know how how my earthly father um, he welcomed me back home, even though um, I had went against his will, you know, a year before. So moving on to, to um, becoming a Christian and, and understanding, like, what, what, what it means to be a Christian and, and God's, the Father's unconditional love for, for us as, as his children, um, there's going to be there's going to be things I miss, but I, I want to what I what I want to bring this to is about last fall sometime or I don't know a couple couple months I should have got the dates. Um, Todd had sent me these audios to listen to, and I uh, I didn't listen to them at first, and I think about a week later I listened to them. I was on my way to Pennsylvania with a load. And, and, and the, it was a low, low time in my life, like spiritually. I was trying to understand, you know, why. I, I felt like I was missing something. I was like something, like why, why do I struggle so hard? Like what, there's something that I'm missing. And uh, I'm listening to these audios and, and it finally, it finally hit. Like I, there is a, um, most of us here, you know, we grew up with believing that God loves us. You know, he, um, we were taught ever since we can remember, you know, God loves us. But th- there's a difference between believing and, and knowing. And, um, yeah, it, it was just, it was a very interesting experience because for the first time in my life, I felt like I actually knew that God loved me unconditionally. And it didn't matter what decisions like I made or um, the father was going to be there uh, ready to welcome me home, you know, regardless uh, of the decisions I I made. Um, So anyways, I I got to my first stop in in Pennsylvania and and, uh, I was like, I got to call Todd. And uh, I'm walking back to my trailer, and I was like, as soon as I get this ready to unload, I'm going to call him. My phone rings, and it's Todd. And uh, it was just confirmation to me that, that, um, that what I felt was real. It was like God showing me that, that this, was, this was real, and, and we talked about it, and... Um, it was just, yeah, it was a, a breakthrough for me to, to fully grasp that, that difference of, you know, believing and, and you have this idea, but to actually know with like every, every part of myself, I, I knew that, that the Father um, loved me unconditionally. Um, so, so that's kind of, that's kind of what has been, that's definitely what's been on my mind the last, last couple months is, 
is um, trying to process this whole thing. And, and I come back to, to the, um, the prodigal son. Um, and I want to, uh, I want to dig into this a little more, um, with, uh, there's, let's see, we have three, three, uh, ways that, that the father, three ways that the father loves us. Um, and the number one is he let him go. Um, the father, the father let him go. It, it was customary in those days for the eldest son to not only receive a double portion of his father's inheritance, but to be the first one to do so. So this caused quite a ruckus, you know, within, um, you wonder why, why the older brother was, was mad at him at the end of the story. I mean, it, he really messed things up. His younger brother really messed things up because, um, Number one, he basically, he had no respect for his father. He's like, um, pretty much was tired of waiting on his dad to die. And uh, he's like, well, I want it anyways. Um, so the father decided to, decide to part things out. And one thing that I didn't realize was that, was that, this was parted out. Like, I always thought that, that the, the younger son just took his portion and, and left. Well, no, like the, the, um, the eldest son received his portion too. Um, and, and so if, yeah, it just really, there was nothing about this that was respectful, um, but but the father, father let him go, and I would like to think he he let him go against you know advice against you know against wise counsel like um, I feel like <laughs> the other fathers um, are like why in the world would you do something like this because what if their rebellious son is like. Hey, I want, you know, I want my inheritance now too. Like th this could have caused um, quite a ruckus. And on top of that, um, I can't remember, I didn't write it down, but in Deuteronomy, typically, uh, according to, to God's law, the son would have been killed um, for, for being rebellious. Um, and, and the father didn't, didn't let that happen either so you know in, in in the spiritual realm god our father he he lets us go to he um we are free to to disobey him if we want we can reject and abandon the church we can ignore all the wise counsel of his word and promptings of his holy spirit and go our own way if we want to <clears throat> something that God should throw at the thunderbolt to stop us. They think this would be love, but love means leaving the door open, not locking into it into a prison. God loves man enough to allow him to be free. Loves man enough to risk rejection in order to gain true faithfulness and love in return. He doesn't make the mistake that some fathers make in confusing control with compassion. God loves enough to deny self and allow his children to choose the way they live and live the way they choose. So the, uh, the, second, the second way that, that the Father loves us and um, going back to to the prodigal son again. In the parable it says that, his father, that the father saw his son returning while he was still a long way off. 
He wasn't barricaded behind closed doors. He didn't have the locks changed as soon as the son left. He was expectant and made himself available at the first glimpse of the son's return. God loves us like that. He waits expectantly for our return, and he makes himself visible all the while. Everywhere there are signs of God's presence and his love, if we only but see. The beauty and love demonstrated by his creation that shelters and feeds us. The will and consciousness that and conscience that we possess continually attest to man's ability given by the Father, freedom to choose. The Bible that speaks of God's love and provides assurance and guidance for a good life here and eternal life with God in heaven. These are all signs of God's love, reminders of his concern for us, no matter where we go. And I've said this before, is, is on, on the harvesting crew all, I've never understood why there were certain things that that never tempted me. I, I I convinced that it was the prayers of of my family and um, those that cared about me that God, um, on their behalf, put put a hedge of protection around me. I thought it's also interesting how um, the father waited for his, his dead son's return. Um, it says, uh, for this my son was dead and is alive again, and he was lost and is found. God's love is like this, and that while we sin, while we ignore him, while we harm ourselves, while we mock him, and all he has done to show us his love. He plans for and works each day to win us back and wait anxiously to see us from afar off, returning to him. The, uh, the third way that the Father loves us is he restores us. It's, it's one thing to take back an erring child. It's quite another to restore an erring child. What the son wanted was to be taken back, given food and shelter, earning his keep through proper and expected behavior. It's what he deserved better than what he deserved. What he was asking for was to live under new rules, under self-imposed law. What his father gave him was restoration and mercy. You can see in, in was it verse 22, um, or verse 21, he says, I've sinned against heaven in thy sight, and no more worthy to be called thy son. And, and the father doesn't even, um, he doesn't even reply to that. He's just, he immediately is, is you know, bring forth the best robe and put him on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Um, the father's gift showed how the son was restored. He, he greeted him with kisses, which showed him his love and affection. He felt compassion, which told the son that he understood his pain and the effort that it took to come back. He put the best robe, which signifies position, the long robes worn by nobles. The ring is a mark of sonship and belonging. The father took him back as a son, not as a slave. The sandal signified that he was not that. The sandal signified that he was not that he. Let's try this again. The sandal signified that he was not to be treated as a slave. The slaves did not get um, sandals. They were they went barefoot. The fattened calf and celebration was a special gift as well. The father gave his son the right to laugh again, the right to experience joy, because with forgiveness comes restoration, and with restoration comes joy. The father restored his son back to sonship again with, with all of its rights and privileges. He even defended him to his older brother, who was jealous of his father's goodness and mercy.
God our Father in heaven is this type of Father. When we return, when we return to Him, He doesn't give us what we deserve or what we've earned. He restores us completely as sons and daughters. And as sons and daughters, we have no more sin. Would someone want to read um, Acts 2.38? The second one is we have no more shame. He covers us with Christ. Galatians 3.26. Someone read that. Galatians 3.26. Yes. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. No more condemnation is uh, in Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And uh, last one, we have no more sadness and hope of heaven. First Thessalonians five sixteen. First Thessalonians five sixteen. Oh, that is that what it is? Rejoice! <laughs> I did not re read that one. <coughs> That's um, actually says it here. In addition to this, God our Father defends us against the constant charges of Satan that we are unworthy by keeping the blood of Christ and the prayers of the Holy Spirit constantly at the throne of mercy on our behalf defending and justifying us. When the Heavenly Father restores us, He restored us to our heavenly position, the son and daughters of God, occupying the right hand of His throne with Jesus. How about you? Have you gone far away from your Heavenly Father? You're only there because He let you go, but remember you got yourself there. He never wanted you to go. This moment He waits for your return, no matter how far you've gone, and no matter how bad you've been. You can always come home to the arms of your loving Heavenly Father, even if your earthly father won't have you. He has your robe of righteousness, your ring of sonship, your sandals of peace and freedom. And the feast is being prepared in heaven, where the singing and the rejoicing have already begun.